Hi there. Hi there. Grab a roller, preferably a flat one, long one, but you can find a short one if you'd like. Place it on the floor. Place your mid back there, right between your shoulder blades. And cup your head with your hands and let your head fall into your hands, meaning hold no tension in your neck to hold your head up. Let the hands support you, but try to relax the shoulders at the same time. Then when you're between the shoulder blades, you're going to bring your elbows inward. That way you can create more surface area between your shoulder blades so the roller can affect more. Then if you want, you can lift the butt up. And this is how slow we're going. We're going snail's pace. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that's my go-to saying. And I talk like this. So we're just going to inch like really slowly, like a snail going down. Any spot that you feel that is stuck, stop there, breathe into it. Use your exhale and let your body, especially that area, fall into the roller. Now, if you want to add a longer leverage, straighten both legs out and then keep the butt and the quads tight. Do you see how my body is pretty much straight? And then hopefully, maybe my butt's a little bit lower. And then I'm just going to inch down, searching for spots that are stuck. Like there's a spot. And I'm going to open because I'm below my shoulder blades now. And then I'm going to let my rib cage just drop. I can also drop the butt as well. Just play around with it. Then I'm going to create a windshield wiper movement. Lateral flexion. Can you see from that camera? This is, this is my upper body. I'm doing this action just to help bring mobility into the joints of the spine, especially with the facet joints. And I'll post a picture up there of a facet joint to try to close them. Because most people, unless you have a military back, a straight back, if you have a rounded back like me, then the back is kind of like that. And then the facet joints open and they're not that stable so I'm trying to close them so if you hear a click you know that they've closed if you've got a military bag you don't really have to worry about this but maybe there's some adhesions in your back too maybe some scar tissue so you want, do want to get on a roller and breathe into it and I just dropped my butt I'm going to drop it and then I do that with each vertebrae so I do about two to three times lateral flexion And then I move down one vertebrae. Sorry if the wind, you hear that sound of the wind. I'm out at my favorite Taoist temple. Oh, and welcome to Holistic Movement with me, episode 44, I believe. We're just loosening the mid-back. Why? Why are we loosening the mid-back? Because the mid-back, the rib cage, is one of the most immobile parts of the spine. It is, I think, the most immobile. We've got the ribs going into the vertebrae, so they don't move that much. Rotation is pretty good, but flexion extension is really difficult. And so when there's immobility in the rib cage, that means the neck and the lower back have to work over time to provide mobility. So a lot of neck problems can come from immobility in the rib cage. But we've done this one before. If you've, you're first tuning in, this is your first time tuning in, welcome. If you've done this before, welcome again, because review is amazing. And I do this probably two times a day. And then when I get to a point where, okay, I'm just going to fall and let my upper body fall down to the floor. And breathe into that. And then I'm going to roll off the roller. I'm going to turn to one side. Roll off the roller and then lie down and we're going to take a break. So here's the warm up. This is the first movement, folks. And I'm going to let the roller roll away. And then feel your mid back as you lie down. Wow. I stayed up pretty late last night, folks. It was Halloween. There was a huge Halloween party. So I'm a little bit exhausted. So this really helps. So I was standing and dancing for so many hours. This really helps that mid-back gain mobility again keep falling
Okay, bend your right knee, bring your left arm next to your left ear, roll on over to your right hand side. Now since we just created mobility in the rib cage, let's create mobility in the shoulders. We're gonna do that with Indian clubs. And maybe you're thinking, Rob, this is not, I don't wanna learn juggling. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> it's the booze last night, folks. <clears throat> I don't want to learn juggling. This is not the circus. These are called Indian clubs. They were used over a hundred years ago to train people to have basically strong arms. And you don't have to necessarily go out and buy them. You can, you can get them on Amazon. I'll put a link down there. I'm not sponsoring anyone. But these are super helpful in decompressing the shoulders, especially if you lift weights, before you lift weights, before you do kettlebells, any kind of weights. Think about this, when we lift weights, there's a massive amount of compression and weight upon our shoulders. That's what we call lifting weights, which is great and it helps build resilience and strength in your joints, everything else. But sometimes there's not enough space. You see a lot of guys walk around like this, right? Because they have no mobility. And so let's decompress the shoulders before we lift and you can also do it afterward if you want, but I recommend before. I've been doing this these for about three years. I learned them from Gray Cook who's an amazing physio out of Tennessee. And they have really helped my shoulders so much. And so, and they also, what's wonderful about them is the movements bring the shoulders into internal and external rotation. Now I'm gonna show you some of the movements just to put a teaser out there. And if you like them, put a comment and say, Rob, I really wanna learn Indian clubs and I'll make some videos about them. If not, you can still do these without the Indian clubs. So please just watch a few of the movements, then we'll do them without Indian clubs. Now, if you've come also, if you've come here before, me mean watched videos before, my episode, previous episodes, I've gone over those movements. And if you're thinking, Rob, I've, well, I've done this before. Okay, there's a Japanese saying. If you learn something for 10 years, 10 years, then you can, should consider yourself a beginner. Now, here's the first basic movement. And you see there's a B on the lens there. Sorry if you saw that B. <clears throat> This is the first basic movement. Then you can get complicated and do these movements. Now, these are a lot more complicated, but I love these movements and my shoulders feel so free and open and mobile. Okay, now, let's do that basic movement we just did. The first one. My hands are kind of crossed over like this, like I have two swords in my hand. And then I'm gonna bring my arms up. I'm gonna back up a little bit so hopefully my arms won't go out of frame. Now when I come up, I'm gonna come up on my toes because when I come down, it's gonna create the momentum to free my shoulders. Now if you see from this camera angle, I cross the left arm in front, then the right arm. Left arm, right arm. Left arm, right arm. And really swing those arms down. Meaning try to create as, mo as much momentum when you bring the arms down. That way you can decompress the shoulders. Left in front, right in front. Left in front, right in front. I'm trying to keep my spine straight. Hopefully you can see from that camera angle. Left arm in front, right arm in front. If this, starts, if this starts to hurt, stop. Let's do a couple more. Okay. And probably in next, week is, uh, next week's episode, we'll go further into these movements. We'll take to the next level and we'll take it up to 11. Let's lie down. Let's rest here. And what do you notice about your shoulders? I feel a lot of activity going on in my shoulders here. A feeling of rejuvenation.
Okay, bend your right knee, bring your left arm next to your left ear, roll on over to your left hand side. Let's come on up. We just released the upper body. Let's go into the lower body. So we're gonna come into, we're gonna bring our left foot forward and our right leg back, you'll see from this camera angle. I'm gonna try to bring my right knee as far back as I can go, just to lengthen my hip flexors and the psoas and the whole anterior portion of my body. And then I'm gonna bring this knee, this left knee ahead of my heel and that's okay. I'm gonna drop my right hand down and then I'm gonna bring my left arm up and rotate my upper body to my left. As I do this, I'm gonna tighten my right butt cheek just to create stability so my pelvis won't shift to the left. And it's a good anchor so then I can rotate a little bit more to the left. We're gonna stay there for a little bit and just isometrically strengthen here. I'm gonna engage my right butt cheek like what I just said, my right quads and really try to use my right rib cage and my right lower back, the whole right side of my body to help propel myself to the left. And then come on back, keep this left hand here on the floor, on the ground here, and then bring the right arm up and then I'm gonna do the same thing. This one might be a little bit more challenging. My arm is inside. You can do it outside, but I prefer the inside. And then I have to use my left quad here and my left glutes, my abductors, my gluteus med and minimus to help stabilize and use my left big toe to really rotate to the right. And I'm not gonna, you see how my hand kind of bends there, my wrist bends? It's compensation because I can't get that rotation as much on this side. So I'm just gonna relax my shoulder. I'm gonna bring my head into neutral here and then come on back. And let's do it dynamically now. So that was static. Now dynamic. I'm trying to relax my face. And I took my sunglasses off so you could see my beautiful eyes. But you can probably, if I haven't muted it out from the software that reduces the noise on the exterior noise here, you can probably hear the sounds of the jungle because I am in the jungle, folks, right above my house in the mountains that surround Taipei. Yep, and I'm using this left big toe to balance and my right thigh. So I'm using both adductors here. Abductors, abduct. As in this, the abductors help stabilize the leg to the left and right and help take the, way, the leg away. Like when you abduct someone or someone abducts your heart. Okay, let's come on back. Let's bring the pelvis back first, if you can see from this camera. I'm gonna bring this left leg back. I'm gonna squat and just rest here, turn my palms upward. If this hurts your knees, don't squat, stand. Or you could squat like this, sorry. Just checking my mic there. Okay, you can squat like that. I'm gonna squat like this in kind of a meditative pose. Feel my breath, feel my pelvis there. And then I'm gonna switch legs. Bring this right leg forward, and I'm turning on this right big toe. I'm bringing the pelvis forward, letting this right knee drop ahead of the right heel, stabilizing the left butt cheek and the quads. And then I'm gonna rotate to the right statically, stay here, bring this arm up. I'm relaxing this shoulder. It's all from the rib cage, it's not from the shoulders. So here's the shoulders, uh, yeah, you can get further for sure. And I can a little bit, but I want the rib cage to accompany the, rib, the arm. And then I'm gonna relax that shoulder. Breathing into this, closing the eyes. Oh, it's a plane from, it's a military plane from China. Run, they're bombing. Sorry, that was a bad China invasion joke. I had to stop reading the paper, folks. It was worrying me too much. Every day, these Chinese planes hovering over Taiwan. Okay, let's bring the right arm back. Place that right palm down. Now rotate to the left. Wow, way more challenging for me. So now, now I gotta turn on my right glutes, my abductors, my glute med minimus, and my IT band, all those lateral stabilizers of the body. And then I'm using my right obliques. 
right there. I'll post a picture of them to help rotate. Keeping both butt cheeks tight, relaxing my shoulders, relaxing my face, staying in the static position. And then coming on back, dynamic. Dynamic. Making sure that both butt cheeks are tight to help keep my pelvis from shifting. Relaxing my shoulders as I rotate. I'm going way too fast. I need to slow down. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Let's do one more on each side. Okay, we're going to bring the pelvis back. And then we're going to bring this leg back. Then we're going to lie on our backs. Rest here. Now we're putting our attention into our pelvis. Feeling where the femurs go into your pelvis. It's called the acetabulum. As I like to call it, the acetabulum. And let the pelvis fall. Feel the activation. Rejuvenation. Appreciation. For your body. Okay, let's bend our right knees again. Bring the left arm next to the left ear. Roll on over to your left-hand side. And we're going to finish with, yep, you guessed it, extension. We're going to have our lower body in the same position we were just at. We bring our left leg forward, I believe it was the first one. And we're going to bring this right knee as far back as we can. Left knee comes ahead of the knee. And then we're just coming up into extension. And then lower the arms. So inhale up, exhale. If you've watched previous episodes, you we've done this position before. Again, I repeat things a lot. You know why? Because I forget shit. And it's good to revisit things because then I'm a different person when I do the position anew. My body has changed a little bit, hopefully, or maybe it's digressed. And there's nothing like extension and opening up the front of your body because we are stuck in flexion most of the day. And I'm just extending up. So I'm visualizing a line from the top of my foot, the toes, all the way up to my fingertips up here. One line extending, extending. And wow, there's so many dragonflies around here. I love dragonflies. They're amazing. Yup. Ah, one more. Really extend for all you office workers out there. That really helps with sitting in front of a desk for hours at a time. Let's bring the pelvis back. Let's squat again. Let's rest here. Turn the palms upward. Take a few breaths. Let the belly relax. See from this camera, looks like I'm fat. Relax your gut as much as you can. Your diaphragm can descend and you can really let those lungs expand and bring in more air and produce more energy that way. Let's switch. Let's bring the right leg forward. And I'll show you from this angle here. Inhale up. Exhale, come down. Inhale up. Exhale, come down. Now, what do you notice? Sorry, as I'm wiping sweat. What do you notice here? The difference between this side and the other. For me, I notice my left side is tighter, meaning more compressed. And so I'm just going to lengthen from the top of my left toes all the way up to my fingertips. 
I'm visualizing and feeling my whole body extend. I'm trying to keep my pelvis from moving. I noticed I was coming back. I'm going to sink into my hip joints a little bit more, keeping this back foot straight, not letting it curl inward. And I'll show you from this view, just so you can see it and keep moving, but take a break so you can see my foot. Hopefully you can see my foot. Hopefully it's in frame and just lengthening upward, lengthening upward. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down. Okay, let's bring the pelvis back. Let's lie down. Let's rest. We're all done. And fall into the floor, fall into the earth. I'm on top of this Taoist temple and I love how it's surrounded by jungle and I can feel closer to nature, which is us. We are a part. As Alan Watts said, we are apples of the apple tree. There is no separation. So sink into the earth now. See you next week.